In this video, we're going to be looking at Turner's seascapes. And I'm going to ask you to bring to the lesson one of um, either Turner's own pieces or a photograph of a sort of sea scene. So these are some examples of some sort of like stormy scenes that I've been looking at that you could uh, choose. Or what I'm going to do in this video for myself is a direct copy from Turner. And I'm going to look at this painting called A Storm. And it's also a shipwreck, um, painted in 1823 by Turner. Now I'm going to take out the boats and I'm just going to focus on the actual scene of the weather, the sky and the sea. So I've been experimenting with um, looking at Turner's way of painting. And I've also been looking at some books that illustrate how he works. So I'm going to show you those as well, just in case you want to research this a bit further. So Turner and the Sea is an excellent book, which is just focusing purely on his sea paintings. This book is very interesting as well. It's how Turner painted, materials and techniques. So if you really want to go into more detail, then but this is worth reading. I've also been looking at other sort of writers and books. For instance, this one here, Dynamic Seascapes, and this one, Sea and Sky in Acrylics. So there's lots of literature out there about painting the sea. Um, but what I'm not going to really just demonstrate is the way in which Turner approached his paintings. So I'd like you to set up a palette. I'd also like you to work as large as you can. So the palette I've got here is set up with blues and reds and yellows and whites. Now, if you look at a lot of Turner's paintings, he those were his three main colours, his three sort of key colours. So that when you look at them, there's always areas of blue, areas of yellows and areas of warm oranges and reds. So that's quite an interesting thing to sort of keep in your mind when you make your own painting. So what I'm going to do first is over this canvas, I'm going to lay down some very thin watery washes. So the size of your brush, I want you to choose it to be quite large. And I'd like you to make sure your canvas, as I said, is a good size. Now, obviously, I'm working quite small in this video. But I'd like you to really think about the scale of your work. So I'm mixing up now. I'm starting with my yellows. And I'm using some Naples yellow, some yellow ochre, and some mid yellow. And to that, I'm going to add a lot of white. And then I'm going to add some flow improver. Just a couple of drops. And where I see the areas of yellow, I'm just going to put down a very thin wash. So I have sketched out very, very lightly where I see certain elements of the painting. But the key is that I want you to work in a very thin wash and you're just laying out those areas of yellow, red and blue. I'm gonna go on to the reds now, reds and oranges. And to mix that, I'm going to use a scarlet red with some vermilion red and a tiny bit of yellow ochre as well and also some lemon yellow or, or mid yellow so that I have a sort of orangey red and then I'm going to add to that my 
thinning. And looking at the picture, I'm going to see where I can see these orange, orangey red areas. Okay, so top, just in the top left corner, there's there is some orangey color tints. This area here on the right, where the rocks are, and in the background there, where the boats are, but I'm not putting the boats in. I'm just going to literally just leave those out and focus on the sea and the sky. So the rest of my painting is going to be blues and sort of purpley tones. So I'm going to mix up using my blues. Now I've got ultramarine blue, Payne's grey, cerulean blue, sorry, cyan blue. And this is a in-between sort of blue. So try and, try and just put on your, your palette a range of, of blues. And the aim being is that this is just an initial wash. So I'm going to add a tiny, tiny bit of a warm red. Let me show you my palette. And again, I'm going to add a lot of the thinner. And I'm going to put it down fairly quickly and using a big brush. Now, turn up himself would paint with very thin washes to start off with. So first layer would be a very thin wash. And then he would start to apply what is called impasto, thick paint over the top. Now, because we're working with acrylics, I want you to really think about drying times. Now, with acrylic, it's quick, so it's perfectly okay to go straight over the top of this pretty immediately. Okay. Now, it's up to you what brush you use, but I really suggest you use a larger size brush and that you push yourself to do that and to work in a way which is quite loose and free. So you think about your thin glazes first and then you start to think about working in a much thicker, bolder way with your paint. So I'm gonna have a slightly smaller brush this time because I'm gonna be working with more precision, I guess. So if you look at the area I'm going to start off with, I'm going to look at these dark, dark sky areas first, and I'm going to make my paint the darkest tone first. So I've got quite a lot of this Payne's Grey, but I'm also going to mix in a tiny, tiny bit of the warm red and some white. Now I'm only using this, this image that I've got as a guide. So I'm going to start now, and it's still quite wet, but the fact that it's wet means you're going to get some quite nice bleeding and running as well. So I'm just starting off putting down quite big brush strokes where I see this darker blue. I'm going to go a bit darker. Now the direction of your marks is going to be so important in this painting because when you look at the waves of the sea, they're going in all directions and also you've got a foreground, a middle ground and a background to think about. Plus you've got different surfaces, so you've got a water surface that you're painting and you've got a sky surface as well. So as I said, keep your brush strokes really loose. And... Once you've put down your initial darker tones, I'm going to come back in with my slightly orangey red. So I'm mixing my warmest red, with a little bit of vermilion and some mid yellow. 
and also I'm going to add some cream or Naples yellow just to tone it down slightly and some a bit more yellow ochre and I'm going to focus on the areas where I see the rocks and again I'm sort of making sure that I look at the shape and the direction of the rocks. I don't mind that I'm blending my blue and my orange together because that that is showing sort of like quite a nice technique and working of the paint. So your paintings are going to be built up in layers and they're going to be really quite thickly painted. Um, you're creating some a painting which has got a certain mood, so it might be quite a dramatic and gestural painting. You're still going to have to think about things like a horizon line, and you're going to also think about um, the areas of colour and light. So I've got very strong areas of light in this painting, which will need to be pushed. So before I do those areas of light, I'm going to push these darker areas blue areas now in the sky and also by the rocks and the sea. So back to the Payne's Grey and Ultramarine I'm going to add to it. I'm not going to use black in this painting um, but you can if you, if you feel sort of confident enough to use it. Um, it's quite a sort of unforgiving colour when you use it so you need to be really really sort of aware of why you're using it. So the directions of the waves are really dynamic in this painting so I'm going to make sure that my brush strokes are showing that sort of sweeping shape and I want you to really experiment in this painting and even think about rather than sitting standing so that you've got more movement in your brush strokes so some of you might have an easel if you're lucky you could perhaps put it up on the wall and paint standing on the wall but the way you hold the brush and the way you move your arms is really going to affect what your painting actually looks like and i have a little bit more thicker purple tones now so I'm mixing my ultramarine blue with my warmest red and I'm going to add quite a bit of white because it's not a strong dark purple and I'm going to add fairly thick fluid brush marks. Now there is some lightning in this painting as well which I will put in but I'm going to leave that right to the end. So because my canvas is still wet, I'm getting some really nice bleeding effects. But I can see that where the rocks are, I need to go much darker. So I'm going to mix up a, almost a red with some Payne's Grey and some yellow ochre. So quite a sort of muddy colour, but at the same time, it's going to add good contrast to the orange for shadows. So it's really tempting to get caught up in detail at this stage, but don't. Just keep it really loose and open. And then when you feel you've done that initial mapping out of where things are, you can start working you want to either with a palette knife or a smaller brush. So aim to start with a larger brush then you can as as you get sort of more detailed go smaller. So I'm going to come in with some of these light areas now I'm mixing in what is like a cream colour with white. So it's off white so I'm not just using white. I'm really going to come in to where these lightest areas are. 
because you'll notice in all of Tanner's work, he has very sort of key light focal areas where the eye goes. Now, this is going to take, because my paint's still wet, quite a lot of building up, and I may need to leave these light areas to dry before I come back in. But you really are going to get some lovely effects if you keep your paint moving and fluid. I haven't used any browns. Um, you might want to have some burnt umber. You might want to mix your own browns. So that red, blue, yellow. And then a bit green. I have got quite a lot of sort of earthy greens in the foreground. So I'm going to start putting those in. What I really would hope with this painting is that you enjoy it and that you really start to push yourself to make decisions quite quickly so that you're working on a very fluid painting that's changing all the time. So it needs to be gradually built up. You might also want to take some decisions where you want to wipe away, for instance, where if you have a cloth or a sponge, you might want to take away and actually make the surface much more, much thinner, so that the paint areas is more like watercolour. So there's lots to think about in this painting. I'm going to show you it when it's finished, but for now I'm going to show you a couple of other images of different artists who paint the sea, just to help you Think about the way you approach it. Now, this this one here is, is much tighter. So what I want you to really think about is this expressive painterly quality that Turner has. And also, if you look, want to look at his watercolours of the sea and the sort of minimalism in them, they're very, very minimal. There's not an awful lot of content, but the, he still manages to capture the essence of what you're looking at, which is a sort of stormy sea and sky. So these are sort of later watercolours of his. If you do go into a little bit more detail, you'll see that he, he was moving towards sort of almost abstraction. Okay, so I'm going to finish there and look forward to seeing you and catching up with everybody on Wednesday. Take care. Bye-bye.